Rebecca, the major story this week has, of course, been Prince Andrew again. He's been trying to have a civil lawsuit in New York struck out. It concerns the claims by Virginia Jufri that he sexually abused her when she was 17. He, of course, denies all allegations. As we record this, we're still waiting to hear whether it will go to trial, but his hopes of striking it out there are hanging by a thread. You're absolutely right. It's once again dominated uh, the royal landscape this week. And I was actually on that conference call uh, when the hearing was held in New York uh, on Tuesday, in which, as you rightly say, Andrew's lawyers were attempting to get the case uh, dismissed before it even come to trial. And uh, it was a pretty brutal and bruising encounter for them. Um, the judge made very clear he had short shrift for all of the arguments they were putting forward, uh, the most prominent of which was that um, uh, Mrs. Jeffre had uh, agreed a previous settlement with uh, Jeffrey Epstein for half a million dollars, which they believed uh, in which they believe she waived her right to take any future action against any other potential defendants. But as I say, the judge made very clear he didn't agree with that at all. And although he has reserved his judgment, and so we will hear it pretty soon, um, I think if you're a betting man, I would be happy to assume that it's not going to go in Andrew's favour. Rebecca, you have written that today he might settle. Yeah, I think this is a very, very interesting development I've revealed in the mail today, which is that a settlement is on the table. It's not being actively discussed yet because our Andrew's lawyers do think they've got another uh, few legal avenues they could go down, but it's certainly not being dismissed. Now, of course, that wouldn't give Andrew the benefit of uh, clearing his name, which is what he says he desperately wants to do. But I think Andrew's lawyers are very well of well aware of what they describe as the attritional um, effect that this is having on the royal family. And of course, the point's been made to me that in the US, 99% of these kind of civil litigations do end up being um, being decided and agreed between the parties out of court. And this could very well be one of them. So I think on this, watch this space. And a veteran of the Grenadier Guards, of which he is the regiment's colonel, called for him to have the role taken away from him. Will the Queen and her courtiers be taking notice of things like that, do you think? I think they will. I mean, obviously, this has been an issue rumbling since 2019, when Andrew decided to put his kind of public duties into abeyance while he focused on his efforts to try and clear his name. Um, and while we've heard kind of certain kind of elements of disquiet over the years, I think those are growing louder and louder because the military feel that it is a very unsatisfactory situation. And I have to say, I do think this is something that Buckingham Palace will be listening to. And to be honest, I suspect they'll be rather hoping that Andrew will do the kind of decent thing and just step back of his own volition and allow them to continue their very, very important relationship with the military with another member of the royal family in position. He was also noticeably not in the photographs on a family skiing holiday over Christmas. He wasn't. So we saw pictures of his ex-wife, Sarah, along with uh, their daughters and their husbands and uh, new children um, out in Verbier. Now, obviously, his family are innocent parties as much as anybody else in this. I, I'm not sure it was the best look to be doing that while the case was active in New York. But I mean, I wrote a story, gosh, it must be about three years ago now, in uh, which I said that Andrew was unlikely to ever leave the country again. Uh, particularly in terms of going to America, but pretty much anywhere else, until he had conclusively um, sorted out the issues uh, involving Virginia Giffray, uh, whether that be the civil litigation or the kind of continuing FBI investigation, who have, as we know, asked to speak to him as a witness to Epstein's crimes, and, and that hasn't happened yet. So, again, I, I, I can't see him... Uh, daring to um, poke his nose out of the country until things have been sorted out once and for all. The full case hasn't even started and already looks pretty ugly. Um, not just the claims, but Andrew's lawyer's attempts to shut it down. It really has been horrendous, hasn't it? I mean, it's hardly a happy new year for Prince Andrew. I Again. Mean, <laughs> the, the impression I <laughs> yeah. get so far is, is the judge in New York is not going to throw out this case. And if he doesn't, you know, Prince Andrew will be faced with two possibilities. One, he settles with his accuser. Or two, 
it goes to a, a full trial and both possibilities are horrendous in so many different ways. I think, as Rebecca reported um, today, he may have to settle, frankly, because, you know, can you imagine? We've got this wonderful year ahead celebrating this unprecedented platinum jubilee for the Queen. And then it would be dominated by headlines day after day yeah. about this, frankly, sordid case. And mm. the royal family just, they just can't have that. So, I mean, Tessa, whatever happens if this case gets struck out or it goes ahead, it's, it's not a good look for Andrew. Do you have any sympathy for him? He's in a pitiful position. I think it's hard to have sympathy with him when he didn't express any sympathy for Epstein's victims when given the chance by Emily Maitlis in that very public interview, which we've now discovered they rehearsed. You know, it wasn't even like it was a sort of ad lib. You know, do you have anything extra to add? I think I've got that covered, <laughs> chin wobble. I think I've you done know. very well. Yeah. So, um, uh, no, but do I have sympathy for the broader royal family? I do, actually, on this issue. We've all got an errant uncle, perhaps not in quite the same mode or style, but all that kind of relation that you're not in full control of. But this is a family which has a very public face. It's a family that doubles up as an institution of state, and therein lies this giant conundrum in the Queen's platinum jubilee year when she is 95 and frail. It just couldn't be worse timing. Well, it's interesting you've written in your column, Richard, you know, this big royal year, and you think that he still believes, Andrew, that he could make a comeback. It really is bizarre, but I still I think he lives in a bit of a fantasy world, and I think he's kept telling his mother, um, oh, don't worry, we'll see this off, whatever. And the, the story that was in my column was that he set up this sort of scheme, um, pitch at the palace to help budding entrepreneurs get investment. And he's kept it going. And it's going now. It employs three people. It's got hundreds of thousands of pounds of funds. And it plans to resume as soon as uh, the pandemic's over, in their words. There's no acknowledgement of Andrew's troubles. So I think he genuinely thinks that he'll be able to resume his public life once this case is out of the way. It's so interesting, isn't it? Because I, I think this time last year, we were discussing that how big a distraction can this mm. be as this important royal year comes. And I think some of us thought that perhaps this matter would have been dealt with, but it's just becoming a bigger distraction. It's a giant PR case, and every time he tries to scuttle it on some technicality, it looks worse. Yeah. He may as well settle, because actually he's done the equivalent by trying to claim she lives in Australia, or you know she'd already been paid off by Epstein, who he's also saying in the same sentence, you know, he didn't have any doings in that context with. So the whole thing does stink. What's interesting, I think, from his point of view, is that he hasn't front-footed it in terms of saving his family. I'm surprised he hasn't said, look, I'm going to renege on those titles just to make it easier for, for the Grenadier Guards, for the Queen at the moment, while the Sword of Damocles is hanging over my head and while he's absolutely said he's, he's innocent. You can still say you're innocent, but say, look, I want to take the pressure off my family. So I'm going to sit right back and, you know, hand over those titles, even if it's just temporarily. And he hasn't done that, which is interesting. It says quite a lot about him as a man. Uh, and it says a, a lot about him just absolutely being convinced that, that he is innocent. Uh, he's, he's, that, that's, that's the only note he's struck all the way through. And, and remember, remember that he still may be. That's the point. We just don't know. She's made these claims. He hasn't been accused of any crime whatsoever. This is a civil case. And, and then he's in this sort of very uh, difficult position of what to do next. But if there is a settlement with no liability, yeah. do you think that in the media, cynical of me, can't see that ending the story in the media? Do you think it will calm things down? I think that he has to face the facts, which is that if he comes to a settlement with his accuser, that is it. There is no way back to public life at all. He can appear at no public event and have nothing to do with the royal family from there on. Gee, I was going to say, do you think that Charles is just chomping at the bit to sort of like make that official? I'm sure he is, yeah. and, and William as well, that it's, yeah. you know, the risk of damage to the royal family is so great. Oh, God, it's sort of grimly fascinating, isn't but it? But the other like, thing that, that history tells us about the House of Windsor is that to, to protect the institution, they will absolutely shut down a family member if they have to. You need to look no further than David, dear David, Ed, Edward VIII. You know, that is what will happen to protect the institution, come what may, I'm afraid, I think.